so uh, welcome everyone so this is our uh, 16th uh, webinar uh, in our net games net uh, webinar series and um, uh, this is the last one in this semester we'll again resume in the next semester and we'll finish this semester with a competition you know we have already gotten our uh, young scholars papers we have shortlisted them we have finalized our six speakers and we'll uh, shortly send you all invitation to the uh, students uh, young scholars competition uh, so um, in this webinar we have uh, professor mark broom with us uh, he's a professor in mathematics uh, City University of London. Uh, he obtained a BA in mathematics from the University of Oxford in 1989, followed by an MSc in statistics and a PhD in mathematics from Sheffield. He uh, held a postdoctoral research position again at Sheffield and uh, temporary lecturing at University of Glasgow. And then he joined University of Sussex, where he worked until the end of 2009. Um, and he was the head of the department from 2007 to 9. He was appointed as professor of mathematics in uh, uh, at City University in January 200, 2010. Um, 2013, uh, with Jan Richter, he uh, completed the book Game Theoretical Models in Biology, published by Chapman and Hall. A second edition is upcoming at the end of 2021. He is on the editorial board of the Journal of Theoretical Biology, Dynamic Games and Applications, and the newly created Chapman and Hall Mathematical Biology book series. So um, that's about uh, Mark Broom uh, for you all. Uh, Mark, uh, over to you. And uh, do you want to take the questions as you go so people can unmute themselves and ask questions, or do you prefer that they should write it in the chat and you will take it later? What, what's, what's your preferred math method? Um, I, I, I either either as we go or, or afterwards, I, I'm rubbish at keeping track of the chat. So uh, so anything that's mentioned in the chat will not get noticed until and, until I stop talking. Okay, okay. So, so, uh, so I would request our audience to, you can ask questions just by, you, you unmute yourself and ask questions. If you write uh, anything in chat, I will keep track of it. And uh, if it seems uh, like pertinent at that point of time, uh, I'll stop Mark and I'll read that out. Yeah. Okay, so over to you, Mark. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Anaban and, uh, and everyone for, for, for coming. Uh, so I'm going to talk about modeling evolution in uh, structured populations involving multiplayer interactions. So this is a, a topic that I started working on, um, this specific topic with, with Jan Richter. And uh, I'll, I'll put up uh, shortly, a list of papers that, that uh, I mean, this isn't all of the ones, but it's all of the ones that I'll mention at some point during the, the, the talk. So the, the talk, you won't get uh, an in-depth look at most of the things. It will really be explaining um, what the what the motivation is, um, how the how the, the model works, and a, a few examples. So there, 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 there won't be a huge amount of in-depth discussion in, in certainly in many of the different directions, but I, I just want to give you a, a feel of, 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 of where everything everything is. So here's here's a list. So the first one, that that 2012 paper is the is, is was the start, and then all of these all of the others um, sort of follow off up, follow up in, in the different directions. Um, so this is a, a good place to mention um, the principal sort of collaborator. So so Jan himself. Um, who's been involved in, in in a lot of the work on on this? Almost almost all of the all of the, the stuff that I've done is also involved him. Uh, Karen Patney, um, he was a, a post a, a, a post uh, graduate student of mine, um, and so so a lot of these papers he's he 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 was 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 working a lot on. Um, uh, Charlotte Le Fay was a was a a French uh, visiting student. And then more recently, uh, Pedro Schimitz is a, is a colleague from, uh, from Brazil. Um, Johan Bauer is my student. And, uh, and then from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, where, where Jan until recently was, um, uh, also two colleagues there, Jonathan Brown and particularly Igor Irovenko, um, who, is, uh, and, uh, who would also be doing sort of further work with me. So we're, we're, we're continuing doing some stuff with that. Um, this is also supported by the, the, the the Marie Curie grant, um, which which uh, 
enabled a lot of the travel that I've done um, over with this grant and also that, that Karen and, and Johan also have done to, to, to North Carolina. Uh, and so there was a, sort of a, 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 a network of, of people um, on various different topics that, uh, that ran from 2016 to 2019. Okay, so the first thing I'll, I'll talk about is, is evolutionary game theory and uh, evolutionary graph theory in, 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 in general before we get on to um, what I'm going to talk principally about. So evolutionary game theory. Um, so game theory itself, um, there's effectively key elements of games, so players. Um, so uh, you, you identify the individual players um, and uh, and so there, there maybe there maybe there are two players uh, who have a range of, of strategies um, and, and a simple minded a, a, sort of a simple game um, is a player one and player two can play rock scissors or paper um, or can play cooperate or defect and when you when you pick your game and when you pick your strategy and I pick mine then payoffs result and uh, and in the simplest games um, a matrix game you can just write up a matrix um, that just lists the, the payoffs that the players get. So, so all of these game theory aspects are that there, there are players, there are strategies, and there, there are payoffs. For evolutionary games, we also need a population of players. And then over and above that, there's a dynamics about how this population will then evolve. So individuals will interact. And, uh, and depending on how well they interact and how successful they are, then, then new individuals are born. Um, uh, old ones die and the composition of the population uh, will change. So this is a well established um, way of, 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 of modeling um, biological populations uh, from starting from, well, before Maynard Smith really, but the Maynard Smith and Price was, the, was where all the, 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 where the, the ideas as we, we, as we see them now um, first, uh, first developed. Um, so these classical models, um, are infinite populations typically well mixed populations so what by that I mean every individual is equally likely to meet every other individual um, and you just play a random opponents uh, and and so maybe you play, you typically play ma many opponents and so you, you you're effectively like playing against the whole individual games against the whole population and so higher fitnesses evolve um, lower fitnesses are eliminated and we, we will look for stable rest points of the dynamics um, uh, or closely related concept, the evolutionarily stable strategy. And, and, and that's a, a lot of my earlier work was, was working in games of, of, of this point, of this type. And there are also finite population versions of, of, of the same kind of idea, again, with, with well-mixed populations. And so that's the standard evolutionary game theory models. Now, evolutionary graph theory um, was developed uh, by, by uh, well, Martin Novak and colleagues, um, um, there was a, the first paper was in 2005, and here you have the same kind of idea. You have games played between individuals, but this time they played on a structure. Uh, the structure is a graph, so I've, I've got a, a combination of vertices and edges. A vertex is where an individual lives and it interacts with all of its neighbours. So a vertex sits there, there's, a, there's an individual on it, it represents the vertex, um, eventually that individual might die and be replaced by someone else. And so there's a, dis there's, a, there's a distinction between the vertex and the individual in that sense, that the vertex is there, but the individuals on the vertex will change. Um, so the, but the V represents the, the set of individuals at any particular time in the population. And E is the connection between those individuals, usually fixed. Sometimes the, the graph will also evolve, um, will, will, will change based upon the individuals, but uh, in, the, in the earlier models, and in the majority of the ones that, that there's a fixed graph. Usually we'll have two types of individuals, um, residents and mutants. So you, you start off with a population where almost everybody is of one type, and then you throw in one of the others uh, is the usual way to, way to behave. So pairs of individuals interact. Um, it, I, may, I may just have a fixed fitness. Um, so my fitness might just be a constant, but I might be playing a game against my neighbors. And so I, I have a payoff. If I play strategy one and you play strategy one, then I get the ward A, say. So it's a, if it's a two by two game, it's just a, the, the standard two by two payoff matrix, A, B, C, D. Um, and uh, because these games are symmetric, 
we don't need to write the pair of the pair of payoffs that you often see in the full of fuller game theory um, where you pay, work out the reward for the first and the second player um, because uh, whether I'm in role one or role two um, if I play one and you play two then then I get uh, I get I get the value B and so it doesn't matter who's in who's in role one and, and role two um, it's it only matters what strategy that, that I play and what strategy that you play so individuals will typically play a game against all of their neighbors and their fitness then is well I, I've written here the average of the rewards sometimes it's the total of the rewards and for irregular graphs that can th th those things can be very different but uh, for, for, for argument's sake we'll say the average of the rewards um, in this uh, uh, for, 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 for here so what happens on the on your on your graph is you've got this population and then we place a resident everywhere and then we pick one at random to be replaced by this mutant who plays this different strategy and then we have a dynamics well the invasion process dynamics is one where um i play game we all play games then we pick an individual with fitness with uh, probability proportional to its fitness and it will then copy itself into a random neighbor um, so the, the neighbor it picks is just uniformly at random um, but uh, but the but who, who gets picked depends upon the fitness and there are different versions of, of this so um, other dynamics you pick a random individual first and then the, the thing it replaces is de depends upon the fitness so the the this population updates and so we set we follow just the set of vertices occupied by the mutant individuals and eventually you end up at the empty set where the mutants have been eliminated uh, or the, the 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 full set v of vertices um, where the, the mutants have taken over the full population and what we're interested in is what's the probability of ending up at v so that's the the, the fixation probability so the next slide um, i've got eight different versions of a graph and these are the simplest possible um, the simplest possible graphs apart from um, of, of either three or four vertices so they've got three or four vertices these so i guess they're not the simplest possible the simplest possible would be one or two um, but uh, but i'm starting at three and four so here there are eight different graphs um, and this follows the evolutionary dynamics that can happen on a on a graph so if you look at look at figure a here that's the the the, the line of three uh, vertices and so then that's there are just six possible um orientations so the so for instance the 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 the, the top the top left um you have a a black dot then a white then a white and i don't there's also white white black but that's that's effectively equivalent just uh just the the, the there's just been turned around and so that there are eight possibilities but two of them um equate to to others so white black black is the same as black black white and and so what white yeah white black black is the same as black black white and black white white is the same as white white black uh, and so and, so, and so similarly within within the others um then uh, any anything that where the, where there's a where where the, it's just a change of orientation you don't need to you don't need to worry about uh, writing it twice and so you just follow the dynamics on this process so individuals can replace their neighbors so black white white can go to can go to black black white or as I've written it there, white, black, black. Um, if uh, if the if that black individual replaces the the one in the middle, and so you you follow a dynamics over the process, and eventually you end up in one of the two absorbing states, either all white or all black. And and assuming that the black individual is the mutant, then you're going to start either in the black, white, white, or the white, black, white position. And with probably two thirds, it would be black, white, white, um, because either of the end vertices picked. Um, will will lead you to start there, and so then you 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 you, you have an initial uh, uh, distribution over the sp spaces, and you have a Markov process, and so it, it's in principle easy to work out what the what the eventual probability of uh, uh, of, of, of fixation is. Of course, for very, as soon as you get big uh, graphs, then then the the practicality of this um, is 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 overwhelming. Um, but uh, in, in principle, we know what the calculation is and, and how it how it works. We'll we'll come back. We'll we'll see these eight uh, later on in a slightly different context. So one potential limitation of of what is a very nice way of bringing in population structure 
is that uh, interactions are generally restricted to either pairwise ones. So most of these evolutionary graph models have these pairwise interactions. Or if someone really wants to put in multiplayer graphs, then you can do it by, by having a, a game where you play all against all your neighbors simultaneously. Um, and so then you have very specific combination of multiplayer games based upon which, or basically the, the degree of the vertex. Um, but uh, many real animal interactions are actually involve many players and groups of variable size and so on. And so we want to bring in multiplayer interactions in a more in a more flexible way. And so that's that's the that's the, the aim of the of the of the the new sort of framework that we we developed um, in that first paper. And so we can then embed the results of different evolutionary games within that kind of structure. Um, and so our graph model that we looked at before, there were three main elements to it. There was an underlying structure, the graph. There were games you embed in it. And then there was a dynamics. So you need those three elements to actually have a, a, an evolutionary graph model. And so we, we actually have a very similar kind of structure um, in the sense that we have three elements. Um, this time, the game will be multiplayer games. And indeed, we'll need to be able to generate a multiplayer games of arbitrary size. So we'll need to say a, a specific form of a multiplayer game that will work just as well for one player if you happen to be on your own or, 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 or 50 players or anything in between. Um, and similarly, um, we, 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 want a, we want a dynamics that's going to evolve upon our structure. But the key thing is the structure, um, is that, that's the main thing that's different. And so I'll first say what the, the structure looks like. So here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the framework. So we've got a, a group of individuals and they can move to a number of distinct places. So N individuals, M places. And we just write a, an N by M matrix. And, and so in that matrix, I can put a one if, in, so in position NM, that means individual N happens to be at position M and, and a zero if not. So the way that's written, then every, every individual is at one place. So every, every row will contain precisely one, one, and all the others will be zero. So you can more succinctly summarize this by um, just having a list of numbers of places. And so then you would just have a, a, a vector rather than a matrix. It's useful to potentially have the matrix because for our, what we're going to talk called call independent models, um, then the probability, um, I'll be interested in working up of, of saying what the probability of individual M going to place M is. So then I, I need this, I need this uh, overall matrix. We'll note that this uh, matrix will not be, it's not a transition matrix. So you're not going, there aren't places in the rows and places in the columns. Um, it's, so it's not, I'm moving from this place to this one. It's very much a, 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 a one move um, where I'm just allocating the individuals um, to a place. So as written, um, it's uh, my individuals start from a, a there's, there's a, there's, there, may, there might be many aspects of information that's gone into what these individuals distribution will be, but this is the distribution where these individuals go. So it's really equivalent of a more complicated version of a, of a row taken out of a, of a, of a transition matrix. So the population is going to follow a random process and it, can depend upon its entire history. Um, so, I mean, the, the, the point of it was that it's very, it's very flexible in terms of the things you can do. So uh, I, 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 my movement might depend upon what I've done in the last few steps. It might depend upon what you've done. So in the last few steps or what, you, what you're doing now. And so I can, I can, I can it, it might be that, that all of us move in a cor correlated way. So we might all move as a herd or we might all separate um, we might move independently, but conditional on lots of things that have happened in the past, or the past might be irrelevant, but we might still move uh, correlated with where we are now. So there are, there are different kinds of things. The simplest version is what I call independent, and there I just have a distribution, you have a distribution, and every individual has got their own distribution, but that isn't affected by current movements of others or past movements of either others or yourself. So that's the fully independent model. There's a history independent model where movements only, where, where what, what anything has gone on in the past is, is, is irrelevant, but we might move in a correlated way. 
there's rowing dependent models where um, in that case, everyone has a distribution that might depend on all sorts of complicated things that have happened in the past, but then each individual based upon all that information moves independently of what the, what the others do. So I can't see what you've done um, in this current movement and then be influenced by that. And so I'm going to talk a little bit later on about what it means to, to involve some history dependence, what it means to involve some row dependence. Um, but first, let's have a look at uh, an independence model example. So this is this is a, an illustration of, 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 of that. So I've got uh, n places, uh, sorry, n individuals, n places, and each of these have got a distribution. And so you can work out quite easily what's the probability of any group forming at any particular place just by combining all of the probabilities that you get. So this, this kind of figure is underlying um, all of the models that have this independent property. I'm going to skip most of the details of this fitness um, slide. It really it, it gives some, some details about how you work out fitnesses, but in general, um, all you do is you work out the movements, and those movements will give you um, what groups will happen. So I can work out what's the probability of any particular group forming. And so in the simplest case, you get that formula within the middle of the slide. Um, what's the probability of the group uh, chi g forming at, at place m? Well, it's just I identify the group of, of, of g, so that could be individuals 1, 3, 4, 5, 7. And then I just work out what's the probability that 1, 3, 4, 5, and 7 go to that place. And they all move independently, so I just multiply those five probabilities together. And then I just multiply by the probabilities that the other individuals go somewhere else anywhere else, it doesn't matter as long as they don't go to the one that I'm looking at. And then all combined, I see that I've got the, these, these precise um, five individuals um, who happen to have moved to this place and the others not. And so that overall probability just gives me a probability of that group forming. And then when this group is formed, we play a game against each other. And so then you just need a reward function for that particular game. And then you average over, the, over all of the possible things that can happen. So just like in, in, in the standard graph theory, uh, evolutionary graph theory, you play a, a pairwise game against your six neighbors and you get uh, one over six times, um, times the, the sum of the, of the games you get. So here, we're, again, we're waiting by the probabilities um, of, of what, what groups form and seeing what the payoffs you get from the group. So let's have a look at an example. So here I've got we, an individuals, a group of individuals, they start occupying their own place. So I've got n individuals, they each occupy their own place at the beginning. Um, and then their movement is, so they, they, they have, a, they, they have a, a movement and then they come back. So, so they move during the day and then they always come back to their own place during the night. So all movements are independent. And to, to govern, uh, to, to, one of the problems with this is that uh, it's, it's very easy to come up with very complicated things. So how do you, Make your movement so that uh, so that it's not the case. That every distribution, everyone's got a different distribution. So we introduced this home fidelity parameter, which said uh, basically I just pick either I stay at home or I pick to one of the places that's connected to the to the to to my home place, and I'm just h times more likely to stay at home. So um, for a star graph with four individuals, um, then well, I'm just going to go to the next slide and I'll I'll come back. So this is what we're imagining, this figure A. So I1 is in a region that you can move to, to two, three, or four, but two, three, and four can only either stay where they are or go back to one. And so the probability movement, so for, for one, it can either go to one, two, three, or four, and it goes to one with probability H times the probability it goes to two, three, or four. So I've just got H over H over three, one over H over three, and so on. Um, and then for the others, um, they're h times more likely to stay where they are than go to the, where the, each other place. But the only other place they can go is the middle um, position one. And so then they're just one over h plus one, h over h plus one. One advantage of this is I've just got one movement parameter, but then I can coordinate how much my individuals mix by just um, varying that uh, parameter. So Mark, uh, there's a question. Uh, yeah. um, Digonto is asking, uh, is h greater than 1 necessary? 
Um, no, it's uh, it's uh, it, it, it could easily be H can be anything between any any, any non any any non-negative number, I guess. Uh, so H, H is zero is possible, um, but we um, we never used H is zero, but it's, it's possible. And uh, any, anything up to infinity is also possible. In fact, H is one is one is what is a, is a very specific thing where where it's where you have no preference for your home venue. Um, so H bigger than one, you you have some preference for your home venue. H less than one, you have some preference for for, for, for going somewhere else. Usually we do have H bigger than one, but it's not, uh, it's not, it's not required. Thank you. So that's, that, that is the, the, the matrix of movement. So as I say, it's not a transition matrix. Um, it's, uh, so it's not from, I start at place two, then I go to place four, and, th and then, uh, then, so then I'm at place four and then I move on. What happens is I start at place one, I go to place three during the day, and then I always return to place one in this situation. So this is so this B is just a representation of that previous figure. Um, so th it's it's this graph written in in that previous form. So um, for this particular example, we have an underlying graph. Not for not not all of our examples, we we, we do have that, but it's for, for for the simpler examples we do. So that's that's this that's this uh, uh, this star example. So how about dynamics? Um, well. I, I'm going to, to skip over the dynamics a bit. I'll, I'll just say a little bit. So for the for the invasion process dynamics, the, or, or, or equivalently the birth death birth, what happens is you pick it. So this is precisely the kind of dynamics I was talking about before. You pick an individual proportion to fitness. So we, we play we play the games. Um, so we, we have these movements. We work out our fitnesses based upon based upon the games that you play, and then I um, pick an individual proportional to a fitness. And, and, and this will be governed by this B, and then D will be governed which individual that I'm, not, I'm going to replace. But here, of course, I don't just have neighbors. We need to work out what this replacement, what this interaction rate is going to be. So how am I going to replace particular individuals? So we'll see how B and D work. So B is just the fitnesses. So we worked out my fitness as individual I and the sum of everyone else's fitnesses. And so I'm just picked with with what, what proportion of the overall total fitness of the population I actually get. Dij is the property that I replace in so that, that if I'm picked to be the replacer, then that the individual ij is replaced. And what we normally, what we typically do here is that we, we measure the proportion of time that uh, the two of us spend together. And the more time we spend together, the more it is that, that, that you're the guy that I would replace, or indeed that I'm the guy that you would replace if you were picked. Um, so the, what, what the weighting is, we, we, we look over all of the different places. And so the, the weighting that I would replace you, or indeed that you would replace me, um, usually these are symmetric, um, is I sum over all of the places that you and I can be together. So for, firstly, I sum over all the places, then all of the possible groups that you and I could be together. And then just what's the probability of those groups forming? And well, that would be the case if I didn't have that denominator modulus of G minus one. So that's there because if a particular group is formed, if there are six individuals and I'm picked as the replacer, then I've got five that I could replace. So if you and I are always in a group of two, then, then, then you're, you're unlucky because it always, always you will be replaced if I'm picked or indeed I'm unlucky because um, I would be replaced by you. But if there are six of us, maybe, maybe you'll replace someone else or maybe I'll replace someone else. And so it, it, it has that weighting. So it's like just saying, what's the probability that we're together um, if you, you, you just divide the times that the individuals spend? So if, if I'm in a group of six, I'd really only spend a fifth of my time with each individual on, on, on average. And here's a set. So there's a standard set of, of evolutionary graph theory dynamics. And we spent a lot of time thinking about uh, rather, rather too much time thinking about what what would be the right dynamics um, before we before we realised that we really couldn't do any better than than just adapting the existing ones um, and that th this natural way of of working out the fitness um, and, and 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 the weights just just matched the the, the ones that were there um, and so there's so, so just the, the 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 four standard dynamics um, does birth happen first before death does death happen before birth 
is selection at the first point, is selection at the second point, all those four combinations. And then there's a couple of link dynamics um, where the selection happens proportionally related to the link between the two, again, in, in, in both orders. So there's, 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 there's a standard six. Um, so here's a game. So I'm not mentioned, I, I said we, we worked out the fitness. Well, actually, how would you, what's, what's, what's the type of game that you could have? So this is a public goods game where cooperators will pay some kind of cost to play the game, to, well, to be in the game. So they'll, they'll, play, they'll play a cost to, to create some benefit that, that, that everyone else will, 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 will share and defectors play nothing. So the assumption here is that the cooperator that creates the benefit doesn't share it um, in this particular example of the game. So th th this is really making life as hard as possible for cooperators. So each cooperator will produce this public good, which is going to be shared amongst everyone else, but not itself. And so there's also going to be a background payoff. So what happens is a group of A cooperators and B defectors, then the reward um, to a cooperator in a group of cooperators and defectors. Well, if, if there's just a cooperator itself, it gets nothing and pays the cost. So it's, a, it's kind of an, an obligate payment. Um, if there's some mix of the two, then it gets the background, it pays the cost, and then it gets the share of all of the other cooperators' um, va values. So if there are two cooperators and two defectors, then I get the background, I pay my own cost, and then I get a third of the reward of the other cooperator because the other two defectors, the two defectors will take their share as well. And similarly, the rewards of the defectors are the same, only, um, of course, the, the fraction is better because they, they get a share of all of the cooperators that are there. And so, of course, in any group, defectors do better. So it's, it's, a, it's got that uh, expected outcome. And so this is one of, so this, this game we've used a lot. Um, we'll see later on that there's a, there's a, well, we won't see explicitly, but I'll, 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 I'll mention that there is a lot of these kind of equivalent uh, multiplayer public goods games that you can, can, can use, and each with different properties. Uh, so I'm going to whiz through um, some of these figures. So this, this has got eight figures. So these match these really simple graphs, evolution happening on three or four vertices, and what I've got plotted on the, the, the y-axis is the average fixation probability. So this is the, the, the key property that I was talking about earlier that, that you work out. And on the, on the x-axis is h. So you can see there that h is going from um, almost zero to something very big. When h is very big, I almost never interact with my opponents apart from for the replacement events. And so it's like every individual just sits alone and so there's, there's, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are no interaction games. And so that means um, that all, all of these points tend to be the same um, because uh, so, so the, well, what's in the, in, the, in the figure is different values of the reward compared to the cost. So, uh, so the, big, the, the, the bigger V, the, the, the more I generate for my, for my payment of, of, of cost one. Uh, and so, um, and so there is, there, each, each of these, uh, these different graphs has very different shapes. I say very different. They're not so different because these in these small graphs, the, the 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 range of structure you can have is not so is not so great. But you you, know, you, you generate different types of figures um, relating the, the fixation probability to H based upon the underlying graph. The, so the, the, the point is that the gra graph is important, H is important, uh, and and V is important in 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 in, in these different ways. Um, and so this is just a fixation property of a defector in a population cooperators. So for these graphs in particular, the bigger V, the better the defectors do. Here's a single cooperation of population defectors. One thing you'll notice about the, apart from the different shapes, um, as I say, I'm, 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 they're really here to just to illustrate that there is this interesting difference, is that cooperators are generally doing badly. So this is a birth, death, birth dynamics. And these, these kind of dynamics, the cooperators tend to do badly in evolutionary graph theory. And it's also true in ours. And so we'll see uh, a, a later example comparing a birth death. Well, actually, it's a death birth death dynamics and a death birth birth. Um, but birth death birth and death birth death behave very similarly, it turns out. So I'll just throw this one as, as well, because this, this is one where many, many bigger graphs were picked. Um, and there are kind of some weird patterns here, um, which I'm not going to go into great detail. Essentially, 
on, on the x-axis here, there's what's called a temperature, and that's heavily correlated with our H, um, but it's a, a slightly more, well, actually, it's a, it's a relatively straightforward measure in terms of probabilities of individuals not being alone um, effectively. Um, but, uh, and so, so a higher temperature means there's more individual interaction between within the population and lower temperature means that there, there's a, essentially individuals just, just, just alone all the, almost all the time. Um, but uh, but for, for here, there's very, we've picked some very specific population values and, uh, and, and very different types of graphs. So the, the, the um, Barabasi Albert graphs were, 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 were this fifth figure. And, and the first figure is just an average of, 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 of different groups. And, and the weird stuff all happened for that particular type of graph or, 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 or most of it. So, but one of the points is that this for, for a lot of this, the temperature is quite strongly correlated with the fixation probability. But yeah, there's lots of di dynamical variation between them. Between them. Again, I'm showing this um, as as, a, as an illustration of some of the things that that happen, rather than to talk anything greatly about it, because uh, I've, I'm 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 conscious that uh, my time is starting to 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 to, to go by. And, and what I want to do is to give, just give some examples of different types of, uh, of things that we've done. So I'm going to talk about very briefly four different classes of model, um, just really to say what we say what we've done. So the first one is we've got a subdivided population. So again, it's it's, it's independent, but this time individuals start in in on the same spot. So, um, well, well, actually, I can point this out more easily by looking at the next figure. So here, I have a base population, but instead of, so I've, I've got an underlying line of three places, but this time two individuals live on the first place, two live on the second place, and one on the third. And with these kind of things, it suddenly makes life a lot easier to get the evolution of cooperation happening, because... Um, these individuals might well be far more likely to interact with themselves. So if you if you do get a group of cooperators, then they do well. Of course, when they try and spread themselves into other groups, then you you end up with a cooperator being stuck with some defectors. Um, and so there's there's counterbalancing tendencies. But but this this is the underlying structure that there's a number of places and a number of different individuals can live at any particular place. Um, so here we have two different types of dynamics and underneath the bar, I think it says uh, death, birth, death and death, birth, birth in, in that order. Um, so this has got, a, so what's on the Y axis is, is the fixation probability. Um, so the fixation probability of one over N is, is the horizontal line. So here there are just six individuals um, and they can either be, um, so there can either be just one vertex and all six live there, or there can be two vertices, but six lives at one and zero at the other. And, and so the first set of numbers here is six, six, zero, six, zero, zero. So the, each number represents a different vertex and each, each individual number represents the, 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 the value of the number is the, the number of individuals who start living at that vertex. And so then the, the solid line is the fixation property of cooperators the, 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 the dashed line is for, for defectors. So in that first one, defectors always do well. So the, the, the measure is, are you above randomness? Do you beat one over N? Defectors always beat one over N there. Cooperators always do worse. Not a very exciting story. When you move on to the death, birth, birth though, it's very different. Um, so for these, for these populations where every individual starts at the first place, well, that's the same. Defectors always do good, do well, uh, cooperators badly, but uh, particularly when you have smaller groups, and in particular pairs are, are the best, the cooperators do better. Um, so for instance, this 2, 2, 2, um, then fixation probability of a cooperator within a defector population is bad, uh, and the defe uh, sorry, defector in a po cooperator population is bad, and cooperator in defector is good. Um, and and there, there, there you've kind of got maximum isolation of individuals, pairs of individuals live together, um, building up fitness, and then you, you th eventually then a, a new individual gives birth in, in, within, within another population. And then you only need to be lucky. Um, the, the single cooperator against the defector is a disadvantage, but uh, if it gets seeded enough times, eventually it will be lucky and, take, and they'll take over that population. 
And so that's that, that way that the, the, the groups can spread. So, so two tends to be the best number in this case. And here's a, just a, an alternative game where, where, where we have um, a number of, of, of different uh, places um, and, and, and then groups of different sizes. And again, the, the dotted line here is the one over N line and then the dashes is, is, is the, how the defectors do, the, the, the solid, the cooperators. And cooperators are doing better than defectors when the, the group sizes are, when the, when the, the population sizes, subpopulation sizes are two or three. So two is best um, in, 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 in these kind of things. But as they get bigger, then, then they, they end up doing worse in there. So that's groups within the population. Um, so let's have now talk about two ways of breaking our, our independence. So here we have a Markov movement model. So here we have some kind of le minimum level of history dependence. So I'm moving around my space. Um, so I've got an underlying set of vertices. This time, individuals don't just go to a place and then go back. They spend several steps walking around the place. Um, and what they do is I move to a vertex and I, I decide how much do I like it at this particular point. And that's going to depend upon who's there. So if, if there are lots of defectors there, my payoff would be bad and then I decide to move away. If there are lots of cooperators there, I would like to stay. And that's true for defectors or cooperators. So defectors will try and congregate around cooperators. Cooperators will try and get rid of the defectors and, and, and group together. There's going to be a movement cost. So uh, it, every, every time I, I physically move, I have to pay a fitness cost to move. And so individuals will then re receive a reward based upon the group that they're in. Um, but then I, I have to pay these movement costs. So at every step, I'm going to get extra rewards based upon who's there. Um, but if I moved, then I also pay. And so every individual is strategy is going to be governed by this, uh, this, uh, this function here. Um, and, and central on it is what's called the staying propensity. So that's my underlying strategy. Um, how, how much would I like to stay where I am on um, all other things being equal? And so then there's, there's going to be this beta parameter is how much I like the particular place I am. So if beta is one, then I'm neutral. And then I will move, well, sorry, I'll stay with property alpha n. Um, and if, I, if, if, if beta is big, then it means I'm, I'm very, that means I, I uh, well, s here is a, is a small number. Um, so if beta is big, then it means I'm really likely to stay where I am. If beta is small, it means I'm very likely to move. Um, and, and so you can tweak these different parameters to have different, uh, different aspects. So these individuals run around and you get, so you get different types of things. I'm, I'm, I'll probably talk about this, front, this, uh, this figure and then skip the next one, but we, we had a sort of a second alternative. So here, firstly, you, 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 you assume that the, the him mutations are rare. So if I've got a resonant population defectors, you, you get you get mutations of other defectors, different type of defectors, but to, the change of type doesn't happen very often. And so defectors are conditioned on resisting other defectors. And so at that point, uh, um, if, if there's a population of defectors, there's no point in moving or, or you move, move very little because you don't particularly want to waste energy to be with others that aren't going to help you. And so here, populations of the individuals stay where they are usually, and, and the, the the mutant cooperators that come in, they might start moving a little bit um, just to be able to get away from these very slow moving defectors. And so, so we have our, so uh, uh, being near one at the top on this y axis, this gives me how, how much I'm likely to move. Being near one means I don't move at all. Being, being near, near the uh, low values means I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to move quite a lot and, and pay the cost. Uh, and so, depending upon what the movement cost is, we get what the what the the resonant cooperator versus the mutant, resonant defector versus the mutant cooperator would be, and here in this position that is is the other way around. Um, here the cooperators are far more likely to want to move because they want to be able to find each other, um, and and well, but but so everything is 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 done working out how how well you do against a particular cooperator, but a, a, a population of cooperators. And within these circumstances, you can get different kinds of outcomes. So based upon the mutant, the movement cost for this particular case, um, I haven't told you the details of what, what the size of the population was or, 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 or other parameters, um, but, uh, but you can have situations where, where cooperators are, are better than the baseline. Again, there's 10 individuals. The baseline is this horizontal line. 
Um, and so cooperators can, can, can invade generally and defectors not, or defectors invade and cooperators not, which happens when the movement cost is bigger. In, in the inter intermediate ones, you have kind of mutual stability where um, both types are, are, not, are not doing well as invaders. Um, and indeed, um, you can just about get both types invading. Um, for different types of graphs, so this is this is really a, this is a well mixed graph underlying the, the population. But in in the later paper, we consider different types of graph, and the structures here you get are, are very very different. I'm going to skip that one. Um, so, how about uh, how long have I got? You have uh, around 15 minutes remaining. Oh, okay, okay, that's 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 far better than I, than I thought. So good. I'll, I'll I'll slow down a little bit. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll at least not speed up anymore. Um, so for this section, I'm I'm talking about breaking sort of uh, sort of the, the row uh, uh, independence. So here, it's very easy to talk about how individuals should move independently. Um, what you do is you just accumulate a lot of, in, of information um, about what their distribution should be, but then everyone has got their own distribution. I've got mine, you've got yours, um, and you just work out how every individual moves. Um, but what if you want to, them to move in a correlated way? So there's, there's some aspect of herding within your population. Then it's more difficult to come up with a natural way of, uh, of doing it. Um, and in fact, it's, you, you, need to, you need to think about it. Um, and... Uh, so the, the last couple of talks I've given, I spent the whole talk just talking about this particular aspect about how you, how you sensibly come up with uh, ways of making a group of individuals move over places to have certain properties. So for instance, in this, in this talk, um, I've, I've been talking about these populations uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in a group of individuals moving over these places um, but uh, I might want to specify certain features. So maybe my population generally will, will congregate. So there, there, there might be predators that are, that are, that are around that, uh, that are threatening us uh, and that uh, there's safety in numbers in, in some sense. So that, so that uh, I either being together might either it scares off the predators or, or maybe at least you, if, 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 if there are a lot of us, when the predator attacks us, at least maybe, maybe I'll get eaten and you'll get away. Um, whereas if there's just one of you, then you get eaten. Um, so there might be re reasons for wanting to group together or there might be reasons to, to, to spread out. But I, I want to, us to be able to move so that we're not, so that we move in a, in a, in a correlated way. And there are different types of ways that, to, to do this. And, 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 and in our 2020 paper, then we've generated uh, a number of these different methods. Firstly, the baseline, if movement is completely random, what's the probability that two individuals move together? So that's gonna be our, that's gonna be our key measure is, um, well, the, in fact, we, it turns out we need several measures to be able to do things properly. Um, but the most simple measure that you can think of perhaps is, is pick a random pair of individuals, what's the probability they're together? Um, and uh, so one I'm, thing I'm also interested in is making sure that underlying the, the population, individuals have a specific movement distribution. So previously, um, so if, if we're independent, then you can say I move following this distribution and you move following that distribution. But if we're not independent, but I still want overall our marginal distributions to be this, then I need to find a way of, of of, of making the, the probabilities so that they, they, they achieve maybe a, a certain correlation matrix, um, but in, in, in the simplest term, to, that they achieve the right probability of you and I being together. So, so this R is the baseline. That's the probability that we'll be together if we just move independently. And so if I want us to, to herd, to collect together, I want to pick a probability of us being together to be bigger than that. If I want us to, 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 to disperse, I want to pick a probability that's a, 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 a probability of us being together that's smaller than that. And in fact, we can show that, uh, or we have shown that uh, these are the bounds. Um, so uh, for a particular distribution of P's, um, and it's important to do that, um, uh, obviously the smallest value of this would be when all the P's are one over N, oh sorry, one over M, um, but we're not going to necessarily assume that. We, we've got a particular value of P's, then you can, you can have this T value 
anything up to one or not quite hitting that lower bound. Um, for some values, if, if you had certain inter integer probabilities uh, and so on, um, integer probabilities. So uh, what, what I mean by that is, 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 is that you can achieve those probabilities with an integer value. So an, an actual distribution of individuals can achieve the, achieve the, the distribution, um, can achieve the probabilities, um, then, uh, then, um, then you can actually achieve the lower bound. But sometimes you need a little bit extra um, so that, that that lower bound isn't quite attainable. But we can say what the, for any particular circumstance, we can say how to show what the lower bound is. Um, and so one, so you, you, can, you, can, you can achieve anything within that range. So one way of doing it is was, was we had these urn models. And so then a, 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 the standard kind of poly or urn. Um, so I've, I've got a, a number of balls I put into, put into a bag and, uh, and I pick, a, pick a, a, a ball out of the bag and with, with that probability, my individual goes to that place. And so then I, I can pick a sequence of, in, of, of, these, of, of these movements. And if, when I pick one, um, then I put in an, another, say, another ball with that, that, same, that same color, so, so, so it's that same number. So I, I pick out a one, and then I put back in a one and another two ones, maybe. Um, and then, then you can get some correlation. So if the first guy has gone to that place, then the second one is more likely to go to that place as well. And so if, if you order individuals initially at random, so I, I've got these N individuals and I, I pick their, their, their the ball picking order to be, to be e every ordering is equally more likely, e equally likely. And then out of doing that, I, I then pick this first individual and it follows this process and so on. Then you can get, you can, you will achieve the, the appropriate uh, marginal distribution that you want and, uh, and a range of these values of, of, of correlations. So these kind of earn models, um, um, so either, and you just change the number of balls you replace. So that's, that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, um, where you actually move everything sequentially, is this wheel model. Um, and with the wheel model, what you do is you, you have a, a circular base and you allocate the probabilities just with, a, with an angle proportional to, to the probability. So, uh, so the, the, the actual number of degrees, sorry, the actual number of radians um, is just p times two pi um, for, for for each different place. So here, on the first figure, I've got four places, and and p one is bigger than p four, and so it has a bigger angle. Um, so that angle, so so the here here the, the circular angle is just one, um, and so the so the angle in radians is two pi times that. And so then what I do is I place my individuals. So again, each of these places, the size matters. Um, the size of the angle, but also the, but also I'll place those um, those segments in a random order. So it won't always be p one, then two, then three, then four. Um, it might be one, four, two, three, or so, or whatever. So the, the ordering will be picked randomly. And then I'll place my individuals on an upper circle. Again, they will then they will then be be ordered in some in some way. So I might that this might be random, or it might be very deterministic. So I might I might pick the angles so that they're, they're equidistant between the individuals, or it might be that they follow some distribution. Um, and and so if that distribution is very very tight, so that the the, the individuals' angles are almost all the same, then all of those individuals are going to end up in the same place. If I spread it out maximally, then they'll be maximally spread over the place. So then you stick this, once you've got this generated, this wheel, you stick that on the top, spin it, and, 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 and they put, 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 allocate themselves to random positions. And so in place one, um, these, these three individuals have gone. Um, in place four, one individual. In place three, nobody. And in place two, there are, there are two individuals. And uh, if I have the, the absolutely uniform um, distributed wheel, so every pair of individuals has got a, a same angle between them, then that always achieves that the, the lower bound. Not the, not the written lower bound I had there, but the real true lower bound of minimum of minimum t. And so that, that, that will always achieve that, and, and, and that might be slightly above that, that headline lower bound, um, but we can specify exactly what it is. So the good thing about this wheel is actually you can achieve everything between the, 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 the true lower bound and the true upper bound um, by just changing the, the, the wheel values. But there are, there are different ones that you can also, also do that too. And as I say, we, we spend a lot of time looking at all sorts of different distributions and how these things work in, in, in that paper.
Um, so the, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, now we're, we're, we're moving away from graphs again. Um, so but we're, we're now talking about in general for, for, for uh, well mixed populations of, 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 of for, but for variable group sizes. Uh, and so in this 2018 paper, we, we considered we were very much focused on multiplayer games in general and pick these multiplayer social dilemmas. And there's a range of them. So we, we, we picked what other people had used. And uh, and so I, I, I think we, we had we had about, about 12 different uh, di different different games. Um, and so there was there were threshold dilemmas where where so it's sort of where we needed well, so we may, maybe had a, a, a multiplayer stag hunt where four individuals needed to be together to be able to catch the stag and and, and different different types of things like that. So the, there was a set of, of 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 three core types of 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 of, of dilemma that we got. And one thing that was interesting from this um, was just to look at the variability of the distribution. So, so here we said, okay, we've got well-mixed population, an infinite population actually. So we're right back to those first type of models, except instead of playing pairwise games, we're playing games of a variable group size. And we picked a nice distribution just so that, uh, that we could do some mathematics on it. Um, so all of these were exact results that we could get. Um, and so we've got a negative binomial distribution. Um, so we, we pick a mean group size that we want, and then we we pick a a, a, a value of 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 a of the of of of, of the, the, the the success parameter that just uh, that just uh, then um, well actually so this this s related mean and the variance such that, uh, that that if you had a small s you had a very large variance and if you had a large s you had a very small variance so I can I can I can control for a fixed fixed group size a variability from from minimum variability to to to, to maximum. Um, and so in each case, we, we then looked at, the, so the plots you'll see is the incentive function. So it's just the payoff of a, of a cooperator minus the payoff of a defector. So here there are six cases. So what's called the, so the, the so we have uh, uh, two different versions of the, of the, of the, of the prisoner's dilemma, two different versions of uh, the, the, the variable prisoner's dilemma, um, two different, ah, no, one different version of a snowdrift and one different version of what's called the volunteer's dilemma. So each, each of these, each of these have uh, defined the games in slightly different ways to the, I mean, the principle is, is quite similar to, to how I define that single game, but each of these are slightly different things. Um, the point was that the, the thing, the things that come through from these, these, these particular types of dilemma. So this, this, whole class of games um, is that uh, if you look at this incentive function, so that the incentive function is payoff of cooperator minus payoff of defector. So if it's above the zero line, which is this, this gray um, line, well, at line, horizontal line at zero, then cooperators are doing better. So zero means that uh, everyone is a defector. One means everyone is a cooperator in the population. And so if your line is always above this horizontal line, it means that cooperators always do better. And so the only solution is that cooperators are, are, are the best. Um, similarly, if the lines are always below, then defectors are better. Um, if the lines cross, then it depends upon how they cross uh, as to what as to as to as to as to as to what the solution is. So a cross down crossing downwards means that there's a stable. Uh, equilibrium mixture, a crossing upwards means that so you have two pures. Uh, the one feature that I want to, 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 want to point out um, is that, uh, so S values, small s is high variability in the group size. So, and you can always see the small s's always dominate the, 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 the larger s's. So what's happening in each of these figures is that the solid line is always above the dashed line is it works so the, the 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 small dash line is always above the the, the longer dash line, um, and so that means as as my variability goes down, cooperators do worse, um, and so, and these lines these these incentive functions completely dominate in each of these cases, and so this always means that uh, that cooperators are always doing better um, than if 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 the variability is big. So this variability of group size is actually favourable to for, for cooperators. Uh, so um, you, so for, for instance, in the first in the first figure, um, pure 
cooperators is the only solution um, for, for, for S is one, and for the other two, um, defector is the defect is the only solution. Um, in the say the, the third figure, um, co pure cooperator is the solution for the for the for S is one. For S is this the intermediate value, then um, then you have a, a, a mixture that happens at around 0.2. And then for the for the for the maximum S, um, the, the very large S, then it, the line's always below. So pure defect is the solution. And so there's a very clear effect of cooper of, of, of variability of group size for this particular type of games. It didn't work for um, for the threshold dilemmas in the same kind of way. And indeed, there's a, there's a, there's also an alternative alternative type of social dilemma which uh, which which uh, again which, which are more akin to, to the to hawk dove games, um, which uh, which which for these multiplayer games, there's a distinction between that and the snow drift in which in in, in the way that in the pairwise games that there aren't. Um, and so, but for those those kind of games, again, there was a, a the, the, the message wasn't quite so simple. Um, but for, for these, this one is really quite striking. Variability is good for cooperation. And I think that slide just says what I've said. Um, so I don't need to say any more at that point. So I think I've got to where I'm going. Just a quick discussion. And if it is a quick discussion. So what we've done is develop a framework for modeling uh, game theoretical uh, interactions um, in a structured population where there are multiplayer games, uh, variable size multiplayer games. So there's a, there's, a, there's a structure which is new. There's an evolutionary dynamics which is really based upon the existing ones. Um, and there's an evolutionary game which, again, is anything that's a multiplayer game that you can play in, in, in variable group sizes, arbitrary group sizes, is, is, can be embedded in this. Um, so it's a, a natural application is animal territorial behavior. It's at least that's, that's the, what we always think of when we're, when we're um, looking, looking at this. So there's a, there's a territory and individuals are moving around and so on. And, uh, and so for that, that kind of thing, that's, that's, that, that was the, that's the, the, the underlying thought about that. But it's, uh, I mean, there are different kinds of things you think of. So it could be social interactions, for instance. Um, um, and so, so it doesn't have to be spatial as such. And so there are a number of ways that we developed that in and, 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 and what I talked about. So the fully independent model, including uh, on large graphs, small graphs, um, models involving um, subpopulations, uh, history dependent models, so that was um, the, the Markov model is the simplest way of having history dependence, row dependent model, so correlated movements. And then just the effect of variable group size completely distinct from the structure. So, so that last section, I, we deliberately removed all structure so that we could just see, is, is there an effect just about variable group size? And, and a distinctive feature of that last work was that, 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 that variable group size has a significant effect on, on the evolutionary process. Um, well, actually, that's that's true of everything um, to some extent, but that last piece of work um, emphasised that um, more so. I've got to the end, and so uh, I think I'll I'll stop and say thanks very much. Thank you, Mark. Uh, that was great. Uh, any questions? Um... So I have uh, a question, I mean, uh, even if others don't. Uh, so uh, in your independent model, as well as the other models, uh, I mean, I'm talking about independent, independent model because you mentioned that, that uh, you have specifically assumed, uh, I'm guessing that you have assumed that in other models as well, that the mutations are rare. Yes. Uh, so did, uh, are you working in any of the directions where they're not rare or uh, there are like more than one type of mutant? Um, I am not. Um, in fact, um, there's some recent work. Um, so Karen Patney um, is, now, um, is now doing postdoctoral work up in, in Liverpool um, with Kieran Sharkey and 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 uh, uh, other other collaborators and one of his one of his very recent papers is looking at this kind of thing where there's where there's a where there's a there's a there's another mutation coming in behind us 
Um, and and so here, one one of the things you're interested in is 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 what's the probability that your population fixates. So so can, can can I dominate this population before I get eliminated myself by the by the by the one coming behind? Uh, and so so I mean people do think about these kind of things. So one 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 reason I think uh, I I think I've 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 shied away from that just because the the there's been there's been enough new interesting things that we've been bringing in that we've uh, we've tried to we try to be any, any, anything anything that's anything with that that we've not thought in as a new thing we should try and we've tried to, to use this the simple standard um ideas that already already exist um so so for instance our population size is absolutely fixed um there's no there's no um so births and deaths are tied together so that the, the population size doesn't fluctuate which again is something that happens in this in this 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 new model that that, uh, that they were working on so so they, they made other simplifications of course because otherwise it's Okay, Otherwise, and 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 the things. and the home fidelity in the independent model, the H. Uh, so um, so you uh, you have assumed H equal to thirty in all of the simulations that we have seen uh, in this presentation. So yes, that's does, right. Yeah. I mean, does does the result change significantly when H changes? I mean, goes down, goes up. Uh, does the result have? Any yeah, yeah. So so the so the uh, so let's let's. So firstly, I'll go back to the to those original figures. I've gone back too far. Uh, where are we? So so those yeah. so that so these 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 figures we we do consider that the effect of the of of of, of, of varying of varying H. So the H was thirty. Was this uh, specifically these? Uh, um, this, 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 these, these figures here for the for the right, right. For, for, for the groups, and one one reason for that is that the the, the, the individuals are now living on their own patch, um, and so the the the, the reason the, sorry the, the individuals there's a group of individuals living on 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 a particular place, and so that is only really an advantage. Um, if if there's some kind of stability, and so that uh, so there are if there are six of us that live here, it means that we interact with each other more often. And so if H was one, for instance, then it would it would it wouldn't make any difference um, where where we lived. So I, 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 um, because there was an underlying well mixed population um, of, of 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 places. If H was one, it means that I would go to every place equally likely, um, no matter where I lived. So so. H is one so H, means. So H is one takes us back to the previous model, then. Yes, that, that, that's that's right. H, H is one. With, well, not not okay, so not quite because well, well actually, if 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 there were six places uh, and if the same number of individuals as places, H is one would take you back to the previous model. That's right. Um, and so uh, so the, the the reason that that cooperation can involve is because of, of of stable existing groups. So if there are four of us at this place. Then we're most likely to play games against each other most of the time, and that requires H to be bigger than one. Um, and 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 so H is thirty. Turned out to be, I mean, we I, we, we we tried we tried different numbers, and and uh, and I think probably this uh, thirty gave a more interesting picture than ten or a hundred. <laughs> so, but it, so it's I mean, well, I think it wouldn't be different for a hundred. It would it would just be the but the the, the so I think here, here, here we've got the, the, the for these threes, there's this interesting crossing line here. And I think if if, if we had H was 100, then then that line wouldn't cross in quite such a an even manner, for instance. Right. So that, 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 that line would be the, the the black line would be higher up compared to the to the, the to the dashed line. Um, but but for for any for any H that's that's big, um, then you get something that looks a bit like that. And for and for any H that's too small, then then there there wouldn't be much difference between um, that figure and the, and say the figure on the left, I think. So you 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 get to you, you defectors would always win. So you need you need you need a, a certain level of of uh, cohesiveness within your population for your for your cooperators to have a chance. Okay. Uh, yeah. So so those were my questions. Any other questions? I mean. Uh, I just I just wanted to ask something not exactly related to this, but uh, you have uh, considered certain specific graph structures. So what would happen if the edges are also 
with maybe with small probability sometimes deleted and created how would it affect your behavior would it affect your behavior at all in case in case the probabilities are very small um that's a that's an interesting question um for okay we put this so one thing that's in I was, going to say, I was going to say one thing that's important is that it, the graph is connected, but that's not that's not quite true. If, as long as there's some chance of those edges coming back, as long as there's there's some sort of connection sometime in the future, so that uh, that I can always reach you eventually at some point, and you, and you can always reach me. It's you, it, 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 so you, you, we could we could just have a yeah that there's a, some kind of probability that an edge appears any or, or, or is removed at any particular at any particular point. We've not considered this. Um, now there's there's two types of things where that could happen. One is that it's just random, um, and edges appear and 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 disappear at uh, 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 at, uh, at random. Um, now people, I mean, not in this model, but people have worked on evolutionary graph type models where that kind of thing, where that kind of thing does happen. Um, and uh, so the speed, the speed of the so if you imagine every edge is just a, a two-state Markov process, um, so it's either there or it isn't. Um, so then um, there, I, I believe that cooperation does better for the intermediate probabilities, transition probabilities. So that, uh, so for instance, if, uh, if, if when an edge is, so in, in one, one extreme is fixed edges, um, so that's, that's like those probabilities hardly ever so, so the, the probability of changing is, 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 is effectively zero. So edges are there or not there for very long periods. Or alternatively, if the, if the transitions are so fast that it's almost like having part of an edge there, that it, it's there, it's not, it's there, it's not, it's there, it's not, and so on. So, so both of those are, are like stable structures. Um, if there's an intermediate position where, where edges appear for a long time, then disappear for a long time, and appear for a long time, but, but there, are, there is... Well, I say not. I shouldn't say a long time. Appear for a time, and then disappear for a time, and then appear for a time, and it's kind of a, of the order of of a, a, a number of replacement events. Um, then, then I think cooperators do better from that, from what I remember. My my memory for this isn't brilliant actually, um, but, but I believe that's right. That the intermediate level is best. Um, I can't I, I can't remember where I've seen that actually. I, I, it might even be in in, in a, a paper relatively recently reviewed. Uh, well, recently, a couple of years ago. Um, but there, there is that kind of structure, and people have looked at that. But, but also, there's the, there's a possibility of, of of those edges being formed or broken strategically. So, uh, so for instance, uh, I'm I'm a cooperator, you're a cooperator, so I want to form an edge with you. Um, and and so, but, but when you start defecting, suddenly suddenly I might be more likely to break that edge. Uh, and so that there are also games where 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 interactions happen with individuals um, that depend upon the the strategic choices that they make and of course then then it's it's much easier to get some kind of cooperation because because cooperators can keep links um for, for, for longer than 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 uh, defectors will and so so you, you so the the, the 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 standard kind of thing is that the, the the cooperators will try and keep a link and and maybe they succeed maybe they fail um but but they'll try and break links against defectors so cooperator pairs might stay for some exponential length of time and cooperated defectors break after one move or, or something like that. Um, so again, that these, 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 these are considered, um, um, but uh, I've, I've, I've not done any of that myself. So I'm just guessing that could there be critical threshold probabilities uh, like on, on the two sides of that threshold, the cooperators payoffs change drastically? Um, so I, I, so in terms of the the so the, the payoffs would so I guess it depends on how you you would organise your payoffs. But assuming assuming you took a snapshot and, and you just worked out the payoff at that particular time and then you update it, um, then it's I think it's the key the, the key thing for the for these kind of intermediate uh, uh, 
probability but in, intermediate transition so where you where you where you where, where the where it starts you, where you have a, a certain level of time and then you then you then then the, the, the link goes so you can you can you can you can you can allow your group of cooperators to, to, to form and, and do and do and and, and 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 do quite well for a while when they're isolated and then then they connect into a, into another group um so 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 the, the six 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 of us are, are, are connected but but we don't have much connection with others so we can we, we interact and we cooperate with each other um and 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 so so then the cooperators start so we maybe the maybe the whole population becomes cooperators and then a then a new link forms and we move over to another to, to another region um now as 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 i explain that i'm 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 realizing I can't quite remember the the, the 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 details, but I think I think there is a threshold. That's right. That that uh, that if there's a if there's a rate of transition between existing edge and 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 and, and, and non-existing edge, um, but it's it's not say bigger than this is better. It's it's very much in between this and this is better. Um, so that so that the transition the transition between edge and non non-edge. If if the probability is very big um, or very small, you have one outcome. If it's in between, you have another outcome. Um, and it's it's to do with local groupings as much as actual payoffs. So so when 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 the evolution happens on these graphs, um, then the, the it's a, a, a function. How well cooperators do is a function both of the payoffs and also of the structure. Um, and it's more of a structural effect than a payoff effect, I think, for the for for, for this kind of this kind of thing where where the, where the links form and break. That uh, that it, it's it's like this situation where 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 this age is thirty. There's a structural effect. Cooperate gr groups of cooperators tend to be with other cooperators, and and I think this kind of flashing in and in in and out. If if you're if 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 the transition is very very fast, it's just like having a a. a uh, a, a well-mixed population that's just not quite so effective at interacting in every particular pair. So uh, every, every step, you and I will interact with probably a half, say, just because that, that transition between edge and link is happening so fast. Um, whereas uh, whereas uh, if, if the probability is very, if the, if the probability of, uh, of breaking or forming a link is very small, um, that a changing is very small, then you just have a fixed structure. Um, but uh, but in, in, in between you have a sort of aerial structure where where these little clusters can form. Um, I'm not explaining it very well because because I don't remember the details precisely. But uh, but intermediate values were, were different to to the extremes in in, in either way. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. So, but if you have these details somewhere, would, would you please send it to us? So that um, I will. I will try and track it down. I, I say have the have the details somewhere is 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 stretching it. So have seen the details and can probably find it. Is is uh, I might be able to do that. All right. So, so if, if it's too much trouble, then then don't bother. But I I, 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 I might be able to find it instantly, or or, or maybe it may, may, may maybe not. But I'll, I'll I'll have a look. So just the, the question is coming from the background of this market microstructure question where. In, in high frequency trading, uh, people often collaborate for a very short time to reduce the price of a stock or maybe artificially increase the price of a stock over a couple of hours. And then their allegiance changes and they moves to moves on to something else. So I was just thinking of that in the context of your paper, but maybe it's just a random thought. Okay, no, I'll, 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 I'll think about that. Yeah. Anirban, there is a question in the chat box. Yes, there's a question uh, by Sabar uh, that uh, if small groups are more cooperative, can we say anything about formation of networks among individuals? Um, so, I mean, if they're... So, the, the, so the, the, the reason the small groups do better is is just because I mean so if you if you if you if you imagine that so, so, so because this age is big these individuals are always interacting with each other then they really all I need is is to only be with cooperators to get 
maximum fitness. Or, and so, uh, so whether it's whether there are two or three of us, it doesn't make much difference. Um, but the key thing then is 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 that I need to be able to to, to be effective uh, as a strategy. It needs to be able to propagate itself into other groups. So so I give birth to a, to a new individual um, that that will form its a, a part of a, of one of these other groups. Usually, when I give birth to a new individual, it's it's just within my group. But that, those those things don't really matter. It's 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 the occasional moves between groups that matter. Um, and in and 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 when age is big, that is occasional. But then what happens is one cooperator appears in a group of defectors. Now, you might get lucky and 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 replace that 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 cooperator replaces a defector before a defector the cooperator. Um, but the but within that group the defectors are fitter, um, and so um, the the bigger the group the so if if, you, if you're one within ten there's no way that you're going to be lucky enough to just re replace your way all the way through um, because the pressure is always against you. But if if, if there's two or three, maybe you'll get lucky, um, and so that's the and 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 so because the fitness within cooperator groups is so much better than defectors groups, then then cooperators seed within defector groups much more than the other way around. But but when one appears, it's much less likely to replace that group than the defector would replace than the cooperator group, and so the, the the size of the population is is critical then because then the the one defector in a big group of cooperators has got quite a good chance. Um, but one cooperator in a big group of has got a bad chance. Um, but uh, in a smaller group, it, it, the, the, it's more even, even though still better for the defectors. Um, and so, and you, we do see that uh, within, the, within the, the, the more dynamic models where these individuals are running around trying to form, cluster, form clusters, again, what they really want is to form a, a cluster with cooperators and they don't worry so much about whether that's six cooperators or two or three. And so some kind of small interdependency is, 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 is good. The, the thing that they want to avoid is having defectors in the group. Um, and so the, the, and, 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 that, and that, that's, that's, I think that's true for all of these, for all of these type of models is that as, as, soon as, as soon as you've got a defector in there, then because of this evolutionary process also it's it's likely to it's also likely to, to to be a growing number of defectors, um, and so 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 the when when, when I mean so what, what often happens in in the in in the, this 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 model is is that uh, you have a group of cooperators, then once once some defectors start appearing, then eventually it, it will shatter and, and and they'll all run around, and then the, the aim will be to find cooperators again. So. Uh, you and I will be happy to be together, and 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 and, and that will be it. We 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 won't we won't want to move. And if another cooperator comes and join us, that's fine. Um, and so, but 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 they're not that much of a benefit to us. But 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 uh, um, as long as we've got a purely cooperative group. Um, but the, the one benefit for having a big number of cooperators is if one defector comes along, it doesn't damage us as much as if there are two cooperators in the defector. But uh, um, there's not so because the, there's not so much incentive to to, to go and find more partners. Um, as long as you've got a working a working team of individuals, um, but as soon as the defectors come, then you then you then you kind of s split. So I think I think in in each of these different models, just because of the nature of the the games that we've got, um, a small number of cooperators is fine. So um, if you had there there, there was, say I, I mentioned before these threshold games. So if for instance you had a game where 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 you needed four cooperators to make a to, to, to achieve the positive payoff. So it's a, it's a sort of threshold stag hunt game where, where, where two hunters isn't enough to catch your stag, but you needed four. Then, then, then the structure would change. So it it's, it's depends upon this payoff. So this, the, way, the way our payoffs work for this game is, is that really my, my payoff doesn't really, if, if I've got all cooperators, um, so that's B is zero, then my payoff doesn't really vary. Um, no matter how many of those cooperators are, the only thing that does damage me more is when a defector comes. So it's if I change this payoff structure, then what would happen would be a bit different. So I'm not sure if that if that, if that uh, approximated to answering the question, but uh, I, I think I probably answered a different question. Okay. Um, so M Malik, you were asking a question or something? Uh... No, 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 no. I'm just. Uh referring to the okay 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 
So uh, any more questions? Uh, we are at the end of our webinar time right now. So any last question? Okay, if not, uh, uh, that's uh, so thanks, uh, Mark. It was a wonderful presentation and it was a very interesting topic. Uh, some of us evolutionary game theorists here might pick up on some aspects of it very soon. Uh, so that was really nice. And uh, uh, so thank you everyone for, for attending this talk and we'll soon meet again uh, December 8th and 9th for our Young Scholars competition. So we'll have six presentations. I'll send the invitation to you very soon with the names and the abstracts of the presenters and the profile of the judges as well. So, so thank you, Mark. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Very nice. Uh, yeah. a, 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 a pleasure to come. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>